I'm thankful for my wife's testimony. I'm going to have to find out who those kids were she was talking about. Because I'm excited to know that these kids are, you know, we've got 30 to 40 kids that we minister to on a regular basis. And, and their parents don't go to church anywhere. They don't go to church, not even here. They don't go anywhere. But the kids come to Sunday school and they come to Friday night youth. And so when you, some of you are giving on a regular basis toward the youth ministry. And, uh, and I know that. My wife's mentioned it. And, and, and you mark youth ministry on your envelope along with your ties and whatever. You know, every little bit that you're giving, you know, you're blessing young people. You're helping young people. You're helping feed the, the, feed the needy. Uh, last a couple weeks ago, we did our outreach. Uh, we did our food pantry day. We gave away, I don't know, close to a couple thousand pounds, 1,500 pounds at least of food. We gave away uh, thousands of dollars worth of food. We don't have the exact dollar amount because we get a discount on it, but we're, we're estimating. We gave away a lot of meat. We gave a lot of, away a lot of everything. And we gave away, I don't know how many thousands of dollars worth of food to about 70 families on that Saturday. Jesus said, well, Proverbs, it says, he that gives to the poor shall not lack. He that gives to the poor shall not lack. So when you're giving toward good causes, amen, don't think that God's not noticing. Don't think for a moment that God's not noticing. It was several mornings ago, my wife and I were here in prayer. And uh, I was kind of complaining. I mentioned this Wednesday night, but some of you weren't here, so I'll mention it to tell you about it. Uh, I was kind of, uh, in my prayer, I was kind of complaining a little bit to the Lord, and I don't mean being ugly. I'm not going to be ugly to the Lord. I'm not going to play that game. But I, I, I believe I can talk to him like my father. And he's my father. And he understands me better than I understand me. So I was giving a little complaint to him. And, and, and I said, Lord, I says, I'm tired of praying the same prayers all the time. And I'm not reading my prayers from a book. I, I don't, I'm not too much into that. Uh, but from my heart, I, I'm praying for revival. I'm praying for a move of God. I'm praying for an outpour. I'm praying for this. I'm praying for that. And the prayers that I continually pray. And, and, and I told him uh, 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 that I was tired uh, of doing that and I expressed that to him and the Lord spoke to me just stopped me and he said I didn't call you to do that he said I called you to pray in the spirit I called you to pray in the spirit amen, amen. Paul the Apostle, this is not the message today, but Paul the Apostle said, I will pray in the understanding and I will pray in the spirit. You get that? He said, I will sing in the understanding and I will sing in the spirit. In other words, I will pray in my known tongue and I will pray in an unknown tongue. I will pray in English and I will pray in tongues. I will worship in my known language, English, and I will worship in tongues. The Bible says plainly, Paul said, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks to God. Is it a good thing to speak to God? Is it? Then speak in tongues. Somebody will take another verse and they'll discount that one. You can't discredit the word of God with the word of God. It all has its place. It all has its meaning. Amen. So we can't use the word to argue against the word. I, I have met people who want to do that. You can't do that. That's, you know, God didn't give you his word so that you can use it to argue against it. No, the word will complement itself. The word will defend itself. Amen. So I want to encourage you to pray in the spirit. I want to encourage you to pray in tongues. If you can, every day, pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Why? Because... Uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that uh, we pray for we know not what when we're praying in the spirit. When we're praying with groanings which cannot be uttered, he says we're praying for that which we don't even know. In other words, your prayer is deeper than you realize. Your prayer is more powerful than you realize. Your prayer is more 
far reaching than you realize when you're praying in the spirit. Because when you pray in your known tongue, you are praying in the understanding. But we don't understand all things. But the Spirit does. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So should we not pray in the Spirit? Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost about right now. Amen. When we're in here worshiping, you need to yield to the Spirit. You need to yield to the Holy Ghost and speak with tongues. Get out of your fleshly worship and begin to worship in the Spirit. You get to worship in the Spirit very much, you're going to come out of between those, between those chairs. You're going to come out of there. Because those chairs are not going to contain you very much when you get to worshiping in the Spirit. You're not going to want to be confined anywhere because in the Spirit there is no confining. Because the Spirit is about liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty in the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so Romans chapter 4. Chapter 4 verses uh, 17, 18. And I'm going to run, run through some verses and I think we'll have them on the screen. So I'll just keep moving. Make a note of them if you'd like to. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom <clears throat> he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Right. Let's read that again. Let's, read, let's start out with the word who. Find the word who and read with me. Who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Let's read it again. Who quickeneth the dead. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. Somebody says spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. This is my thought. Speak it and believe it. Speak it. I could call it. So shall thy seed be. That sounds like a good title too. So shall thy seed be. But you're not going to have any seed if you don't start believing it and speaking it. Hallelujah. Amen. We believe too much junk and we speak the wrong stuff. Amen. We believe all the negativity and we speak it. And, the, and then, then that junk continues in our life. You hear me? All that mess continues because we believe it and we speak it. And we continue to speak the mess. Amen. That the devil brought to us and we continue to speak it, but we've got to believe the word and speak the word. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? Yes. Amen. Amen. We've got to speak it and believe it. What did, what did Abraham talking about Abraham in this passage? God's talking about Abraham, the father of the faithful. Abraham, God spoke to him when he was 75 years old and said, Abraham, you're going to have a son. His wife was 65. How many 65-year-old women have babies? Not, not too many, right? A few? You hear about them? Hear about them? But not too many, right? It's not, it's not, it's not an everyday occurrence. I bet you at St. Margaret's over here. But I bet you there's women in their 20s giving birth every day and 30s. And maybe 40s. Huh? But not too many in their 60s, right? God spoke to Abraham. Abraham says, you would have a son. <clears throat> and he told his wife, God spoke to me, we're going to have a son. And she laughed. She said, shall God give my old man pleasure? <laughs> she thought it was hilarious. I kind of add a little bit there. That's not exactly the way she said it. But you know, did they have a baby that year? No. Did they have one the next year? No. God may have spoken something to you, a vision to you, a dream to you. It's something that he's going to do, and he has not done it yet. But you believe, and you remember the day. You remember the prayer. You remember the impression. You know, and I don't know about you, but when I say God spoke to me, this is what I believe. I'm not talking about an audible voice. That's not what I mean when I say that. What I'm talking about is there is an, a strong impression on the mind. That, that's what we mean when we say that. Yeah. There was a very strong impression on the mind. And I don't go around every day saying God spoke something to me. 
But I believe that God does speak to his people. And when God spoke to Abraham, I don't know if it was an audible voice or I don't know if it was an impression on the mind. But it was, but it was something sure in Abraham's mind that, that he believed that God had spoke to him at age 65. Son, listen, Abraham, you're going to have a son. He didn't have a son. And he wanted a son. And God wanted him to have a son. And Abraham was a man of faith. Years went by. Nothing happened. No boy, no son. You know, what do we do? We usually give up, don't we? But evidently, according to this verse, I'm just gathering. You know, the Bible doesn't always tell the entire life of the, the story of every person. You know, we've just got tidbits of what Jesus did. The Bible says if it could be written of him, if all the, if was what he did could be written of him, all the books in the world could not hold what he did while on this earth. He did a lot the Bible doesn't tell us about. So all the detail about Abraham, I'm not sure. But evidently, according to this passage here in Romans, that he called those things which be not as though they were. He began to speak things into existence. In other words, when there was no son, he spoke a son. I thank God for my son. I have a son where he didn't have a son. He called those things which be not as though they not were coming, but that they were now, that they were existing right now. He called those things that be not as though they were, they, that they were with him, that he possessed them, that he owned them. And that's what you've got to do. That's what I've got to do. We've got to, we've got to possess our possessions. We've got to call those things. We've got, we've got to be good. Begin to speak those things. We've got to be able to say those things. We've got to be able to utter those things. And we've got to stop saying the things that are opposite to that. You hear me? We've got to stop saying the things that are opposite to that. Amen. And I'm not saying you're doing it. I, I wouldn't know if you was. Because I only live with this woman and she don't do it. But if you're complaining every day. You're complaining about this, complaining about your situation, complaining about your family. You're complaining about everything else that's gone in your life. I mean, then you get to church and you give God the praises. Keep on giving God the praises. Amen. But when you get back home, like I said earlier, stop the negative talk. And I'm not talking about the confession that you need to give to one another. The Bible says confess your faults one to another. Sometimes we need to talk about people, what we're going through, our sickness and our disease and our hospital stays. And we need to talk about people when we're, when we're going through trouble and we need encouragement. We need one another, Sister Esbro. We need each other to encourage each other. So I'm not talking about none of that. You understand that, right? I'm not talking about it, but I'm talking about when you're just moaning and complaining, if you are. Amen. You're going to have to let that go because that fights against all the positive faith that you speak. Because your mouth cannot speak out of a, 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 a sweet water fountain and a bitter water fountain. That can't be. God says it can't. You can't have two types of water in your fountain. It don't make sense. So against hope, he believed in hope. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep believing and speaking when you don't see any evidence. I'm believing God. I said it before. I'm going to keep on saying it. I'm believing God for such a Spanish revival, yes. a Latino revival. And I'm not saying it because we have a few Latinos in the church. Amen. Now, the whites and the blacks, they're easier. Amen. But I'm believing God for a Latino speaking ministry and a revival. Where's it going to come from? It's going to come from God. Do I know how to get it? No, I don't know how to get it except by fasting and prayer and my works. Because James said your faith without your works is dead being alone. So I'm believing God for a Spanish ministry of hundreds with a Spanish speaking pastor. Amen. That will submit to him and Hope Center's ministry. Amen. And faith without works is dead. So let me tell you my works. I've told you. Every day for the last uh, uh, 15 or 16 months, I've been studying Spanish for about two hours a day, five or six days a week, without fail. 
without compromise. Two hours a day, I'm learning Spanish. Why? Because I'm getting ready for the revival of the Latinos that are going to walk in this place. Faith without works is dead. And I'm not afraid to say it because God's watching me study Spanish. Amen. He's looking at the reason why I'm doing it. Amen. I'm doing it in faith because I'm believing in a revival that is going to bust this place wide open. Hallelujah. Is that all you want is Mexicans? No, I don't want just Mexicans. But I'm saying, amen, I'm believing that to be part of the mix. Amen. Amen. You see, there's Mexican churches around here that preach in Spanish. God bless them. I'm I'm grateful they're here. Amen. But we're going to have one too. Amen. We can have 2 o'clock service and they can have a 9 o'clock service or a 10 o'clock service. Or they can have 2 o'clock on the other side. They're running several hundred people. Why not? We won't need any renters. The renters are going to go. Amen. They're not always going to be here. We're not going to need them. Amen? Amen. So, you got to call those things which be not as though they were. So sometimes I walk around here praying in Spanish. The little bit I have learned over the last uh, 15 or 16 messes. (laughs) Amen. Why? You got to act in faith. You got to act in faith. You got to call those things which be not as though they were. Ecclesiastes 8 and 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Where the word of a king is. You know, the Bible says in another place that you're kings and priests under our God. Right. Somebody say, I'm a king. I'm a, king. I'm a priest. Yeah. Yes, you are. You're a king and you're a priest unto God. Where the word of a king is, there is power. There is power. Yes, there the words that you have uh, come out of your mouth, they are so powerful. I give that story, you know, about my mom, and I tease her, tease her about it, and I tell you all about it. For years, she has, says, I'm, when she feels like she's catching a cold, I feel like I'm trying to catch a cold, is the way she's always said it. I'm trying to catch a cold. And I'll say, Mom, why are you trying to catch a cold? You're going to catch the cold. Because you said you're trying. You say, Pastor, is, is it that serious? Listen, brother, it's that serious. Sister, it's that serious. Yes. Amen. You speak what you believe. Change your vocabulary. Change the way you say things. I'm not trying to catch a cold. I tell her, I'm trying not to catch a cold. I, I feel one coming on. I'll say, I'll say to my wife, I'm trying not to catch a cold. That's good. That's what I say to her. Why? Because I'm victorious. I don't have to succumb to everything. You don't have to succumb to every disease. You don't have to succumb to every sickness. You don't have to succumb to everything the devil brings. God don't bring us sickness and disease. The devil does. God is not the author of confusion. Who, who in here would put a, uh, put a disease on, on one of your kids? You wouldn't do that. You love your kids. God ain't doing that either. But you know there are churches that are saying that. Well, this sickness must be from God because it's not getting any better. God must have put that on me to get his, so that he can get glory from my illness. God didn't put nothing on us so that he can get glory. Read the book of Job and you're going to find out who attacked Job. Amen. The devil attacked him, killed all of his servants, killed all the maids. Amen. Killed all of his sons, killed all of his daughters, 10 of them in total. Amen. Wiped out his farms. Wiped out his cattle. The devil attacked him. Read the story of Job. God didn't do any of that. Job didn't curse God. His wife turned against him. Eat some soap, woman. Support your husband. Support your wife. Support those kids. Support those parents. Support everybody around you. Amen. Don't curse them. Amen. When they're going, they, when they look like they're going to go down. Right. He said, you talk like a foolish woman. So he said to his wife. Right. And then uh, after that, the devil came back to God and said, listen, uh, Job serves you for naught. Because, you know, you built a hedge about him, you know. Let me touch Job. I'll get him. He, you, I can get Job to give up. Job's not going to keep serving you. God says, you can t- touch him, just don't kill him. From the top of his head to the sole of his feet, boils, boils, oozing, boils with pus just oozing out the bottoms of his feet, the, 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 in his hair, no doubt, his, his eyes, eyebrows, under his arms, all over his body, boils. The Bible, he, he took a broken piece of a, uh, a jar and he began to scrape his boils. The Bible says he got down, he ripped his clothes off, and he said. <laughs> 
He said, naked I came into the world, and naked I go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 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 Somebody stand and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord in what I'm going through. Come on, let's bless the Lord because he's going to bring me out. 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 Yes, he is. He's going to bring me out of my trouble. He's going to bring me out of my trial. Hallelujah. In Luke 4, 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power talking about Jesus because Jesus, they would bring the sick and they would bring the disease and every kind of disease you can imagine they would bring to Jesus. They even brought the dead to him and I don't know how many dead he raised. The Bible doesn't say we have a, a stories of a few, but no doubt there could have been scores. There could have been hundreds that rose from the dead when Jesus spoke to them. Matter of fact, when Jesus died on the cross, do you know what happened? When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that all the saints, yes. that all the saints that were dead there in Jerusalem, their bodies rose. The Bible says they, they, they lived again. All the dead saints, they lived again. They rose from the dead. When Jesus, there's power in Jesus. There's power in this name. Hallelujah. They were astonished, as, astonished at his doctrine, at his teaching. For his word was with power. When he spoke, there was power. He didn't mealy mouth around about it. He didn't mince around about what he spoke. Amen. When he spoke, he spoke in faith. When he spoke, he spoke with authority. He didn't apologize when he prayed. He meant business. And you and I need to mean business when we speak. You and I need to mean business when we pray. Hey Amen. We need to take it serious. The Bible says that Joshua was in the heat of battle. And the sun was going down. And he didn't want to regroup the next day because they didn't fight night battles back in those days too often. They'd go back to their camps and they would lick their wounds. And they would restart the next day. And jo Joshua was winning and he wanted to conquer this. He wanted to win this battle. And, and by faith, by faith, when the sun is going down on your battle. And it looks like you're going to lose and maybe not be able to win this battle if you don't win it now. You need to do like Joshua. And he looked up and he looked at the sun, the Bible says. And he said, sun, stand thou still. He looked at the moon over there and said, moon, don't move. And it stood over the valley where it was. I'm telling you what, God did a bigger miracle than what Joshua understood. You hear me? The sun don't move, honey. You hear me? I learned in science class that the sun don't move. It's the planets that move around the sun and rotate. I'm telling you, this miracle was much bigger than the people of the Bible probably ever understood because they thought the world was flat back in those days. But when he said, sun, stand still, and moon, you stay over there, you know what happened, Brother Brian? The whole universe stopped in its tracks by the space of a, what is it, was it a half a day or a day, whatever it was, the Bible says, it stopped right there. Everything stopped. Yes. We don't realize the power that's in our mouth. We don't realize the power that's in the spoken word. We don't even realize all the miracles that God does for us sometimes when he does things. There is maybe a chain of events that he stopped or started for you to get that miracle that you'll never know about until you get to heaven. Hallelujah. And so when we just take it nonchalantly, well, God just did something for me. Let me tell you something. We need to rejoice. We need to shout. We need to be excited when God does a miracle because he went out of his way for one of his. He went out of his way to stop the sun for you. Amen. 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 It's the truth. Amen. Yes. We need to be excited. Right. Amen. How do you expect somebody else to be excited if you're not excited? Right. Amen. Jesus taking a nap in his boat 
The disciples were up on the deck. We know the story, right? The storm was brewing. The storm and the lightning was cracking. The thunder was booming. The rain was sideways. The, the boat was reeling up and down, left and right, ready to tip over. They were throwing things over, and Jesus was, amen. He was just down there just cutting some Z's. I mean, he was just down there snoring in, in the boat. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. Jesus! Jesus! Carest thou not that we perish? Right. He opens the door. Frustrated. Aggravated. Comes up a few stairs. Steps near the edge of the boat, no doubt, with the rocket and reeling, the wind blowing, dark clouds, the blackness. It's just the terror on the 12 disciples' faces. And he says, peace be still. Peace. Peace be still. Calmness comes over. You know what you need to see when that, when that, 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 that nervous attack wants to get a hold of you? What do they call those things? Anxiety attacks, if you ever have those things. You know, you know what you need to do? You need to say, get up and stand up and put your hands in the air and say, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Or you may need to do like uh, Joshua. Anxiety, stand out still. Stop where you are. Stop where you are. Stop in your tracks. Matthew 7 and 7. We got to have a faith that won't quit, church. We got to have, you got, you got to speak it and believe it when you don't feel it. There's going to be days and nights when you don't feel anything from God. You feel, you just feel backslid. You feel like a sinner. You feel like, where is God? Maybe not that you've been sinning, but you're like, where is God today? You're going to have times of discouragement, but you're going to have to believe somewhere. You're going to have to find a faith inside of you and that you're going to have to speak it out. Amen. You're going to have to speak your faith. Jesus said, ask. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask. And it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Let's say those three words. I've got them highlighted. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Say it again. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. That's what we need to do. We need to start asking God. We need to start seeking God. We need to start knocking on that door. Hallelujah. We need to start asking. Come on, till it comes. We need to start seeking till it comes. We need to start knocking till it comes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You ask me to come to your house, I'll probably come. If you're a woman, I'll bring my wife. <laughs> Just so you know. Hallelujah. But if you ask me to come, I'll come. But to get there, I'm going to have to seek. Uh huh. You might say, Pastor, I got a. I, we bought you a gift, and we want you to come to the house and pick it up. Okay, I'll, I'll be there Monday afternoon. So I've got to seek out where you live. Right. Amen. I, 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 I've got to. But we'll, uh, after I find out that where you live, and I get there, then I've got to. I've got to knock. Right. Amen. I've got to knock, and he says, and it shall be. Open, hallelujah. I want, the, I want the door open, don't you? I want the door open. But I've got to have a consistent faith. I, I've got to learn to speak this faith. I've got to learn to say it. See, I've, I've got to do more than think it. I've got, I've got to have a hungry, a hunger in my soul. I say to my wife probably several times a day, when are we eating? What are we eating? Tengo hombre. Quiero comer. Ahora mismo. No entiende. 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 Sí. 
How old are me and Small? How old? Right now, right now, right now. I'm hungry right now. I want something to eat right now. Now, I had to learn that one fast. I, uh, praise God. In case you want to learn that one. Hallelujah. She's at the Taco Bell or somewhere and they don't understand. Tengo hombre. Ah. John 14 and 13. And whatsoever we shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. A, a faith that will not fail. A faith like Abraham that even after, Sister Esmer, 25 years he had to wait. God had said at 75 years old, you're going to have a, you and your wife are going to have a son. But he had to wait 25 years before it came. But you know, God spoke to him four additional times, a total of five times. God renewed that to him, renewed that promise to him over a 25-year period of time. Five times God spoke and said, you're going to have a son. It's going to be like the stars. Your seed is going to be like the stars, uncountable. It's going to be like the, 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 the sand on the beaches, uncountable, uh, innumerable. Oh, my, you, your seed. Guess what? We, you and I, are of the seed of Abraham. We're part of the sand of the sea. We're part of the stars of the sky. You and I, we're part of that promise. Do you understand that? You and I are part of the faith of Abraham. We're part of the seed of his son Isaac. But he had to wait 25 years. I don't want to wait 25 years. There's things that we... Might have to wait a while, but there are some things we may just have to wait a little bit. But we're going to have to speak, and we're going to have to believe. I said we're going to have to speak, and we're going to have to believe. Speak with us in revival when you walk in this church. When you walk into this place, let's believe God for a soul-stirring revival for Hammond. Amen. I want, I want to see thousands saved. I want to see God turn this city upside right. I want to see God save the mayor and the politicians. Yeah. Amen. God save the firemen and the policemen. Amen. All the teachers in the school. See these maps. We got maps up here of the city of Hammond. I said, we got maps up here. We need to walk by sometime and just put your hand on it and pray for it. Say, I'm laying my hand on this map. Amen. For the city in the name of Jesus. Believe in God for a citywide revival. Say, Pastor, you're looking at something that seems impossible. You're looking, you're asking for something that looks like it's not going to happen. How do you think Abraham felt? Come on, how do you think Abraham felt? He had no son at all. And then he went and cheated. And he got Hagar, had a baby by her, they're made. Because his wife says, hey, God said you're going to do it. I'm tired of waiting. Go into, go, go into the, our, our young maid and have a baby by her. Amen. Why do you think we got all these terrorists today? Uh, why you, where do you think they came from? They came from that lineage. Come on. not Yeah, that, that's right. Not, not, all, uh, not all of those that are Arabs are terrorists. Amen. But that's where the terrorists, uh, that's where the uh, terrorists came from. Those that are Arabs, those that are uh, of that uh, background that believe in Allah because uh, he never did serve God. What was, his, what was his son's name? I'm blank right now. Not Isaac. Ishmael. Ishmael. Thank you. Ishmael never did serve God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Church, you can't please God if you're not believing him. I cannot believe God if I'm doubting him. It's a, it's a complete insult. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What does that mean? For he that, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is what? He is what? He's a healer. We must believe that he's a healer. We must believe that he's able to bless the money. We must believe that he's able to put back a marriage. We must believe that he's able to put back a family. To bring home that daughter, that son, those grandchildren. That he is a savior. 
that we must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Will you diligently seek him? I so enjoy praying at times when I don't have to watch the clock and I don't have anything else on my agenda. You know why? Because I know I can pray freely and I can yield to the spirit and I can just pray as long as I need to pray and as long as I want to pray. And you know, I, my wife and I talked and we said the other day, our morning time of about an hour a day that we pray is really just a maintenance. You can't really get much done, it seems, in a maintenance prayer. You can't seem to really get a lot going in a morning prayer when you know you got to go to work and you got things you got to do. Amen. But when you can get some sacrificial time that says, hey, I'm going to set, set aside some time. It may not be an all-nighter. But you know the words, you're not going to look at the clock for the next couple of few hours. Amen. You begin to pour out your soul. You begin to pray in the Spirit. You begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You begin to talk in tongues and talk in tongues. And let the Spirit flow through you and use your human frame. Let, amen. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you what He knows needs to be prayed. Amen. We're going to have attacks and we've been attacked and the people in this church are being attacked. Amen. With sickness and trials. We got people missing today that should be here. Amen. That want to be here and different things going on in their lives. But I'm telling you what, we're going to have to help pray them through because some of them are so discouraged. Some of them may not know really how to pray. Some of them are newer Christians. Some of those haven't been here in weeks and uh, haven't even answered my call. Amen. Because amen, maybe the devil's got a hold of them. I don't know what's going on in their life. Amen. But if anybody ought to care, it ought to be you and I. If anybody can pray them through it, it's got to be you and I. He's a rewarder. Mark 9, 23, my last verse I'm going to give you. But I want to tell you, there's nothing impossible with God to him that believes. All the impossibilities are with you and I. When we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief, we cannot see nor receive God's promises. We limit God. We measure God with our unbelief. We look at that tomb where Lazarus laid like, uh, like his two sisters, uh, Martha and Mary. And, 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 they, and they cried, Jesus, if you had been here, you would have saved our brother. See, Jesus got word that he was sick before he died. They sent him word to Jesus, your friend Lazarus is sick unto death. Would you come and pray for him? But let me tell you, raising the dead for Jesus is no different than waking someone out of sleep. You hear me? Raising the dead for Jesus is no different than waking somebody out of sleep. Amen. He can heal a cancer like he, he can heal a headache. Amen. He can heal an AIDS, amen, like he can heal, amen, a little thing that's bothering you today. He can heal a disturbed mind like he can heal somebody that's just troubled for an hour. Hallelujah. He can give peace in the storm. It doesn't matter how severe it is. But we have got to speak and believe even for one another. We have got to speak and pray for one another. When we take hands and pray in this congregation and we join together and pray, we need to pray a, a, a prayer of faith. We need to pray a prayer of fervency. If you don't know how to play basketball, just get out on the court with some boys that do. You'll know, you're going to learn here. You spend every night this week, in about a week or two, you're going to learn it all by practice. You're going to learn a whole lot just in a week or two by practice. And if you don't know how to pray, you just start praying. And you're going to learn some things. Amen. We're going to teach you some things. Amen. But you're going to learn some things. And you're going to learn, number one, how powerful prayer is. I tell you, the, the, the more I pray, the more I want to pray. 
The more I fast, it makes me want to fast more. Somebody looks around and says, well, it just doesn't look like the Lord's doing much. It just, you know, and they compare this church or another church, and they get to comparing. That's, that's so unwise. You don't know what's happening in the spirit. My wife said to me one day, you know what? When this church fills up to the max and we're having such an awesome revival and, 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 and just it's so happening, she said, people are going to want to come back that left. And they went to those big churches. Yeah. And she said, yeah, and, and, and a lot of those that want to come, but they don't want to come because uh, they, they want the big thing going on. She says, they'll come then. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like to say, don't need you. Really don't need you. Right. Not saying I would say that. Not saying I would say that. But I would think about it. Really don't need you because you weren't here. Amen. Right. Amen. You weren't here before. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I speak a revival. I speak, I lose a revival. I, I don't believe God gave us this building. See, the, the, there's, a, there's an electrical company attached here to this, to this wall right here. And there's another business there. He brought it up to sell it back months ago. I want to buy it. Not now. Unless the Lord just want to pay it off. Amen. And, and, and that little park thing across the street, the American Legion owns that. I want that. And that empty grassy field right there, I want that next door. Because that could be a parking lot because we're going to need that. Because the 60 or 70 spaces in the back is only going to be enough for, you know, and the parking up and down the street can only hold so many cars. But we, we're going to need all that. So I'm believing that. I'm speaking that. I'm claiming that parking lot. I can see nice new pavement over there in the grass. I, I, I can see us using that on youth nights across the street. It's lit up, has picnic tables, has restrooms, has a little area there inside. I could see us using that for Sunday school. I could see us using that for outreach functions and picnics for the church. I could see it's nice and fenced in. I could see that. I could see this next door. I could see us using that when we get that. I could see us using that maybe as a daycare to raise additional money. Amen. To, to, to do more for God. To give to missions overseas. To send out missionaries. To plant new churches in other areas. Amen. Amen. To plant a church in South Chicago. To go into over in Illinois and plant more churches. Amen. Maybe even to go into East Chicago and plant another church. Amen. We could use more churches. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The people without a vision, God said, are going to perish. I refuse to perish. I've got a vision. Come on now. Jesus didn't say pray for a lot of things, but he did say pray for laborers. We need to pray for some laborers. People, pray for some people that's got a driver's license. Pray for some people that's got a CDL. Pray for some people who's got some CDs too. Amen. They want to give. Praise God. The CD is a certificate of deposit, if you didn't know that, at the bank, okay. Right. And, and they usually put thousands in there. That was just a joke, okay? Not really, but amen. however God wants to do it. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. I didn't sell my, I didn't sell my $300,000 house, 3,000 3, plus square feet, because I didn't believe. That's right. I didn't do that because I, I had doubt. I did it because I believed. I didn't move over here a couple minutes away because I had doubt. I, I did it because I want to be fully engaged. Yes. Because I want to be fully involved. Yes. Amen. Amen. I didn't take a 17, was it $17,000 loan on a car that was paid off. I didn't do that because I didn't believe. Right. I took that $17,000 loan and I gave it to him in Hope Center. Amen. In faith because I believe in revival. Amen. I, I'm not bragging, church, but faith without works is dead being alone. What do you believe in God for? What do you believe in God for? What do you believe in God for? I got a boy that's not serving God. I got a boy that don't even want to go to church. But I'm claiming his soul. I'm claiming his wife. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I look for him to walk in here. I was looking for it this morning. Yes. I had to hold back the tears Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Yes. gotta believe 
got to believe. We got to speak. Come on, church. We got to speak. Jesus, talk to a tree. You may have talked to that sickness, brother. You don't have to talk to that disease with, which you got, you're got battling with. You got to talk to it if Jesus talked to a tree. And the Bible says the disciples heard it. He said to the tree, be thou cursed and let no more fruit grow on you. And the disciples heard it. Jesus said, if you say to the mountain, it shall be thou cast into the sea, it shall remove. If you say to the mountain, be thou cast, it shall be plucked up and cast into the sea. I'm not trying to move the smoky mountains over into the Atlantic Ocean. But sometimes I've got mountains in my life is what he was talking about. And I told you the story about the lady, the little old widow lady, senior citizen, lived in this little town, and she didn't have a car. There were no buses in her town. Let me tell you what she, how she got to town and went and got her a uh, little half a gallon of milk and whatever she needed. And she walked over that hill right there. See, she couldn't even see town because of that hill. But she walked over that hill every day. She did it for decades. Amen. And she walked back carrying her little groceries back to her house once or twice a week. But she got tired of that little mountain in her life and she got to praying against it. She got to speaking against that mountain in her life and that hill. Amen. That she had to walk over all the time. One day she woke up extra early. There was noise. What in the world is that? Somebody at my door? Somebody in my yard? What's, what's, what is that noise? Just clanging and metal clanging and sound like equipment, sound like machines or something. And she wiped her eyes and flipped the light on, went over, pulled the blinds back, looking toward that hill, and she's seeing bulldozers, backhoes, bunch of guys in hard hats. There was an order by somewhere from heaven, no doubt, to the mayor's office that said, we're going to move this hill. They did not know it was for a little lady that had been praying and speaking the word. Yeah. Don't tell me God can't do it. Right. I'm almost done. Thank you for holding on. But I want to tell you something. I was planting a church years ago. There wasn't too many of us. But it was in Cayman City just next door here. And that was back in the 90s and it's all gone now, but at that time, Calumet City and many decades before was known for all of its taverns and its strip clubs and all that stuff. It was big. And, and there were still hundreds of taverns there in Calumet City at that point. But every Wednesday night during church, I'd get down and pray and bind those spirits. We'd bind those spirits. Who's ever in service with us on a Wednesday night, we take authority over the alcoholic demons in Calumet City. Take authority over the alcohol. We did that for weeks and months. I forget how long we began to take authority over those alcoholic devils in Calumet City. Oh, right in there were bars. It was, it was custom for a, a taverns to be right in a house to be converted. At one time, there was over 300 taverns in a city of 30,000 plus people. Yeah. And you know what? One day the newspaper came out after a couple months of that praying. I had a picture of the mayor. His name was Jerry Genova. Anybody ever heard of that mayor? Back in the 90s. He went to jail. So, so you know. But he, he didn't go to jail for this because God told him what to do and he did it. Big headlines, picture. The mayor orders to shut down the taverns and the strip clubs in Cayman City. And not only that, he was going to buy them out with city money and convert them back into houses or just level them. And he was going to build restaurants in its place, build other things in its place, tear down the strip clubs. And God sent word is what happened. God sent word. God sent word. There was a... There was a I, I, when I was selling insurance and I'd drive through the south side and I was living in Lansing years ago and, and I would go down Avenue O which was Burnham Avenue and there's a Burger King sitting there now but if you know where that Burger King is not too far from here actually 
just five minutes from here, before you get into the Burnham Hickwish area, there was a some kind of a bar, club, or something. I'd never been in there, of course, but it didn't look like a good place to me. So I'd drive by, and I would say, I command you to burn down in Jesus' name. I just drive by and say that. I command you to burn down in Jesus. I just keep on driving, going home. I command you to burn down in Jesus' name. I didn't tell anybody about my prayer, but God heard it. Yes. You know what happened a little bit later? I drove, I drove by that place, and it was rubble. It had burned to the ground. Right. It had burned to the ground. And I thought, oh, my. Thank God for hearing my prayer, but I hope they don't build it back because they're probably going to get some insurance money. You know, you got insurance money, you build your business back. They didn't build it back. They put a Burger King there. Hallelujah. Thank God for Burger King. Thank God for Burger King. Hallelujah. The devil's a liar. There's power in the spoken word. You say, well, pastor, that was a coincidence. It might have, might have been, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's all stand. Jesus said unto him, Mark 9, 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible unto him that believeth. All things are possible unto him that believeth. All things are possible unto him that 